Hey people, this is Monsterdad and welcome to my channel and the beginning of this Empyrean Galactic Survival. Was that dramatic enough? Probably not. Anyway, I've been really looking forward to starting this game. Um, the, currently the Iron Man Season 6 of Empyrean, hosted by Captain Adonis, is, is ongoing. I think it's into its third week now and I've been watching that. And I can't wait to take part in season seven myself. So uh, let's use this as a playthrough and a bit of a practice as well, I guess. Let's see what we've got. Today. Come on, come on. Quicker than that. Okay, I'm going to press left alt and freeze the position of my craft so I can have a little look around what I've got around here. There's a village down there. Oh, that's good. Abandoned factory. Is that another village over there as well? You're kidding me. And that's part of the ship as well. A crash Titan. And let's try and head this way a bit, a bit closer over here. Two villages and an abandoned factory. So the abandoned factory, the good thing about that is it won't shoot at me. I think it does have a couple of sentry guns on it, but uh, it doesn't have the big turrets like the enemy POIs, so that's a really, really good position to be in. I'm going to skip this tutorial. Let's open up, see what we've got. Not a lot. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is sort out my inventory. I cannot stand messy inventories, as you'll probably discover as we go through the game. Don't need those at the moment. Keep all my ammunition at the top left. All the other things I keep in my inventory stay down the bottom couple of rows. No particular reason why. It's just what I do. It's how I roll. Let's just load everything up, ready to go. Okay. Let's grab. Oh, put my jetpack on. Take my helmet off. Grab some berries. Um, village right there. I'm not going to visit the village just yet. Um, I'll head back to that in a little while. What I want to do first is let's have a look on the map. Is I do want to go and what do we got? We got silicon there, promethean. So still need copper and iron. And the end, I think it was the engine compartment that was there as we went past. I saw in the distance, I think I was up here somewhere. So I'm going to head back over this way. I'm going to head to the Promethean deposit first. What I'm going to do first is, um, whilst we're sort of safe, you get a 24 hour grace period in the game um, before hostiles start spawning, the hostile creatures that is. So, what I like to do initially. I was going to walk exactly the wrong way then, it wasn't I? Yeah, there we go, this way. So Promethean Positive, actually right past the village. I actually travelled a long way from my starting point, didn't I? Um, what was I saying? I keep distracting myself. Yeah, I'll go in there and loot that. Yeah, when you're using your jetpack, try not to go too high, otherwise you come down with a bit of a bump. Um, on the way over to the, this deposit, I'm going to break all the rocks I can because the surface rocks are the only natural way of finding Colbo on Aqua. Is it Aqua? Who knows? Let's go with Aqua. Um, yeah, so the surface rocks are the only natural way of finding Colbo. So it's worth smashing those anytime you pass them. Um, as well as giving you some extra ores of various types. Oh, there's a copper deposit. Where's that? Just over there. Okay. Um, yeah, so as well as giving the e little bit of extra ores, very easy to get without having to dig holes everywhere. Yeah, it was the engine compartment and the copper deposits near that as well. They can also give you cobalt randomly. Um, it's pretty rare, but it happens. So my initial plan for my gameplay is to, whilst we've got the safe 24 hour period and we still have some daylight, 
I'll go round and I'll collect around about 200 of each of the four types of ore that you usually find around the, the starting survival base. So I've got three of them here. I haven't seen any iron yet, but I'm sure there'll be iron somewhere close by. Um, and that will be enough. That should be enough then for all my starting needs until I get some better equipment, uh, a vessel, and then I can go around and, and collect ores in bulk. When you're using your drone, press tab twice and then it will bring up the circular HUD display on the top right. Not so important now, early in the game, um, but if you're near a bait, an enemy bait, POI or you've just killed a drone and you're doing something, another drone could be sent in as a replacement. It's always a good idea to keep one ear. One ear? One eye. You can't see with your ears, last time I checked. It's always good to keep one eye on your HUD see if there's any danger coming in. Cool. So after I've collected this first ore, I'll move on to the next one. Um, and a good tip, your survival constructor down here, this one, when you go and collect your next ore, it's always a good idea just to pop that survival constructor down before you start digging your hole and let it start processing some of the ores you've just collected from the previous um, hole that you dug. That way the survival constructor is earning its money and you're getting through the ore processing as quick as possible. You're not wasting any time, any valuable time. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to go... This mining is boring, I know that. Digging holes isn't the most interesting part of this game. Um, unfortunately it's a necessity so you can get some decent resources. So I'm going to skip past this bit and I'll get back to you when I've collected my couple of hundred ores from each of the four deposits or if anything interesting happens. So, later! Okay, so I'm just coming to the end of my little mining session now. Last little bit of op uh, opper, copper that I need. Yep. Perfect. Remember to pick up my survival constructor. As you can see, I've processed lots of ores and promethium pellets whilst I was mining. So no time wasted, which is great. Still a little bit of daylight left as well, which is good. Um, now I need to chop this tree down without falling down the hole I just dug. Let's put my light on, because that would be a bit stupid, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be the only stupid thing I've ever done in this game. Now as you see, my health is down to 325. I've landed, I took a couple of harsh landings already, which is another stupid thing, really. Right, what I'm going to do now is head up to the engine compartment. Um, Usually, my game plan now, um, in, in the recent 7.5 update, they added in the, the ability to be able to sell your unwanted stuff to the admin bases and the trading stations, which I think is great. I, I mean, I love creative games, I love building games, I love trading games as well, so this is a, a bit of all of it now. 
So what I would normally do is come here after I've gathered those initial ores, sort out the stuff that I will take with me, and I'll only take stuff with me that I can sell apart from the core in case I come across something I need to take over. So the stuff I would normally sell from this base would be these. So I'd normally just dump everything but my ores, take these, and then head off by foot. I don't I don't normally bother building a motorcycle. And the reason I head off by foot is purely so that I can pick plants and break rocks on the way. And I usually head west, regardless of where the admin base is. In this case it is west. And the reason I do that is because just like planet Earth, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west in this game. I can leave that stuff in there because I'll be coming back to this place soon. Um, so I would normally head off on foot west that way you can actually stay within daylight so this is you know I finish this just about right time the the resource gathering as sun's about to go down over here and as you can see it's still daylight over that way so I'd normally head that way picking every plant I go past breaking every rock that I go past um, so that I can gain experience um, because picking plants is a good way of gaining experience however I'm not going to do that this time because the presence of those two villages there means that I can get all the experience I want right on my doorstep. Um, one of the good things about villages is they are, well they do, as well as having some decent loot in them usually, they'll also double up as XP farms. In addition to the, the indigi indigi indigenous natives that you find around the planet, they also spawn um, some creatures that the name escapes me. They look like a cross between a bat, a hairless ape and a dog. So whatever name you can get from that I guess would fit. What about Batfink? Batfink. That'll do until I find out what the name is. So these Batfink usually spawn in threes in the... Um, I'm still collecting plants so still, it's still a good way of getting experience and I've already unlocked level three. Um, so these things, when you kill them, and usually four or five good shots to the head will do it, as it probably would do most things. Um, they give you upwards of 1600 experience for each kill. So really worth going here. And here's some of the local natives. They're obviously going out for a, a midnight stroll from the village. All right, boys. Catch you later. I'm just going to go and raid your village. Hope you don't mind. So here's the village. Um, so what I'm going to do, instead of heading off by foot, collecting um, plants, breaking rocks. Yeah, so normally I'd head off towards this way, but on the way I'd try and find a couple of neutral POIs that I can loot. And the only things I'd take from them, because inventory management is pretty important early in the game, um, the only thing I'd take from them would be the... Excuse me a moment can't do more than two things at once. Um, yeah, the usual things I'll take from them would be only things that I can sell at the trading base. And my aim in the initial starting period, 24 hours of the game, will be get to the trading base with decent things to sell, earn a bit of money and buy tier two tools, weapons, um, kit myself out in medical supplies. And, and if I've got enough money left over, up on my ingots and, and buy ev buy out everything I can buy. So what do I need here? Let's grab those back. I need copper more than anything now. Yeah, so that's what I would do. And then from there, then the game, they would go back to the, the POIs that I discovered and loot those. Oh, I can hear the bad ones already. That's these things. There you go, bat finks, whatever they're called. Um, now they're difficult to get from up here. The best place to kill these things is actually on top of the plant grown area over there. So since there's some spawned, I'll try and... Oh! oh just got over that one in time. Yeah, they usually spawn in threes and... 
they oblige by standing there while you shoot them in between the eyes, which I think is very kind of them. As you see, I've got 1600 experience from those. I don't collect these alien parts. If anyone knows a use for them, please let me know. I've never found a use for them. However, I do grab a few alien teeth from them because they're good for the antidote injections, which will combat the parasite affliction, which is a pretty nasty affliction. You could also farm the locals if you were a person of low morals, which I am occasionally when I need to be. So there's a loot container there. So I've killed three of those. They shouldn't spawn for another minute or so. In the meantime, I'll grab some of this. Some real food. Cool. There's usually three or four of the loot containers in these villages. Um, I can't remember where they all are. I don't think they're ever in this one. Yeah, very nice in here though, isn't it? That must be the local boss, the local deity, Bob, maybe. Okay, there's another one up here. What have we got? Shop right. The upgrade kits, um, brilliant for selling. Oh, sniper rifle, nice. Actually, I'll buy a tier two sniper rifle from the base, so I'm going to actually sell that. Good stuff. Um, I'll sell the weapon upgrade as well because that they they actually can provide quite a good lot of money as well. So my game plan changed from taking a, a long, long run to a nice, really easy level progression from here. Be careful those things don't haven't respawned yet because they do hit pretty hard. I can hear one. Oh yellow one, cool. Nice. Where is he? They don't path up ramps, but they will come inside the buildings. Where are you guys going? Let's see if I can get out without being eaten to death. Yep, just. This is the best position to get these things in. Into, should I say. That's level 5. Um, I will spawn in my hover vehicle or a one of my hover vehicles early in the game um, that is the only vehicle I'll ever spawn in cool I think I've probably got enough copper now as well so let's do some fuel a bit more iron and silicon a few more pellets Okay, so spawning in vehicles. Um, I have a problem with that. I think um, the factory system is a little bit overpowered. I've got a couple of uh, hover vehicles on here. I think I'm going to spawn in the yellow peril because it's nice and cheap. And it's pretty nippy. Um, it doesn't show up as me on the factory icon here because um, I had to download it from the workshop because I built it on my laptop and then had to publish it so I could get it onto my main computer here um, so I'm going to pop that one in the factory yeah like I said um, spawning things in I think is a little bit overpowered and the main reason for that is that I could spawn this in without unlocking any of the technology that's associated with this with this build um, so there's technology, as you can see here, I'm spawning in at level 5, so there's technology up to level 5 with hover vehicles in that. And I don't need to unlock any of that technology to spawn this vehicle in. So I think that's a, it's a little bit overpowered and a bit cheaty. I think what they really need to do is to make it so that 
you have to unlock the associated technologies with whatever vehicle you're going to spawn in. Um, to me that would balance the whole factory system far more. It's 13 minutes start production so whilst that's producing I'll let the Saval constructor produce a few more goods. We'll continue searching this just in case there's another Oh, let's get out of their way first in case there's another one there, another loot container. Yeah, so I enjoy games that are a bit creative. I play a lot of space engineers as well, Kerbal Space Engineers, um, Creativeverse, Minecraft. And one of the things I like about those games is the actual design process, trying to build something and engineer something that that works, that's fit for purpose. And I think using the factory takes that away from, takes it away a little bit. That's why I'll only spawn in vehicles that I've actually designed myself. Let's see if there's another loot container around. Um, I won't spawn in somebody else's vehicle. Because I don't, there's just no, for me, there's just no satisfaction in doing so. Um, and like I say, I think you should be forced to unlock the technology. I just looked in there, didn't I? I think you should be forced to unlock the technology before anything you're going to unlock as well. So what I'm going to do now is go to my technology, go to the hover vessel, and I'm going to unlock everything I know that's on my particular hover vessel. So I know I've got spotlights. There's a generator, a fuel tank, mobile constructor, and a fridge. There's no O2 tank, but I do have an armor locker, so I need to unlock those to unlock the armor locker. I have no weapons on this one, it's purely just a scout vessel. Um, I've got thrusters up to medium, a hover engine, and there's a hover boost. Obviously I have a cargo, and I have some docking pads. I don't have anything else there, but I do have cargo blocks, a cargo box, and an ammo box. Um, what I'm also going to do is unlock the cargo box harvest module for the harvester, and also, oh, I'm out of points. I need to go up another level to get some more points. I want to add a, a harvest module onto this because it's a great XP grinder. Um, one thing it allows me to do is crush all those rocks without having to actually get out and do it on the drill because I can do it from the safety of my vehicle and I can do it en route to wherever I'm going but also you can use it to kill creatures and grind them to meat literally and you get the XP for it which is great so you can do that again from the safety of your vehicle Okay, so I'm unlocking the harvest module. Uh, I'm going to add that to the vehicle once it's spawned in. I'm also going to unlock the assault rifle. One thing I don't think I've ever seen in the trading station is the tier 2 assault rifles. Um, I'm going to unlock the explosives because I like to blow things up. Um, but yeah, and I like the assault rifle. They do sell the Pulse rifle tier twos in the trade base, but you know I don't really like pulse rifles. Um, they're just not my thing. I like the assault rifle. It looks good. Sounds great. I might have to farm a few of these guys whilst we're waiting for the vehicle to to finish in the factory. So yeah, so that's my issue with spawning. I think it, you should be forced to unlock the technology. Um, as an extreme example, if I can pick the right one, oh yeah, go to my library, go to capital vessels, you know, level 10, as long as I had the resource, that's a lot of resources, but you could get those resources with a, a small vessel, um, because of small vessels you can do small jumps of 15 AU so you can you can get to other planets with a small vessel but it, once you've got this look at one less extreme like this one that one will be fairly simple to do and it will have a lot of I mean it uses Ascosium, Arrestrum, 
a lot of neodyne, neodyne, ne, neo, let's just call it neo, I can't pronounce that. But that means there's probably a lot of high-tech technology in on that, up to, well, technology up to level 10 anyway. Um, so there's all these things that are probably on it that you would never have to unlock. Um, and it just doesn't seem right. Not to me anyway. So I'm, I'm hoping that they'll change that sometime and part of putting something in a factory will be unlocking associated technology. But that's it. I'll get off my high horse about that one. Um, and we'll carry on. These guys just are dying literally to meet me. So let's not make them wait any longer. I'm getting low on ammo now, actually. Okay. One of the other big changes they made in 7.5 update was the way you make ammunition. You used to use promethium pellets to make ammunition. Now you use a thing called nitrocellulose. And that's... Um, you get that from plant fibres. And a lot of people focused on this change and started the game by chopping down tons and tons of trees because you can also make plant fibers from logs now as well that was the other change so you can make plant fibers from logs and nitrocellulose from plant fibers but one of the um, things that people tend to focus on is the fact that you need nitrocellulose so they're going to chop down tons and tons of trees um, in fact you need very little you need one nice nitrocellulose to make one batch of bullets I'm going to farm a couple of these guys while I'm waiting. Um, so for instance, projectile rifle rounds, something that most people tend to use. You need one nitrocellulose for 50 rounds. You get 20 nitrocellulose from one plant fiber, and you get 20 plant fibers from one log. So do the math, chop down one tree, and you'll have en enough nitrocellulose to last you for a good part of the game. However, one change they did miss, a lot of people did miss initially, was the fact they upped the cost of the ingots for the for the bullets as well. Um, so it actually costs more in ingots now to make the rounds. So don't focus on gathering trees, make sure you get enough ores to satisfy your bullet needs. Nitrocellulose, it's it's a red herring really. I'm probably going to make this the last batch because I'm running out of bullets and then we'll head back up to the engine compartment. There's yet another change they made in uh, 7.5 was spawning of when you spawn a vehicle in you have to spawn it in at a base or on a base I should say so some kind of platform it doesn't necessarily need to be a um, doesn't necessarily need to be your own base you can do it on neutral bases as well I've found oh, am I going to have space for these yeah just about good so, for instance, I could probably spawn it somewhere in here if I wanted to, but I, what I'm going to do is go back to the engine compartment. It's still the first day, so it's still pretty safe to travel at night. And I've still got some stuff at the engine compartment I want. Um, but once I've got my hover vehicle, that means I can grab everything from the engine compartment rather than leaving a few things there. When I go past some neutral POIs, I can also grab everything from those loot-wise rather than just the stuff that I can carry and sell so and I can travel much faster and much more safely as well which is a good thing because as soon as the sun comes up in six hours gameplay the hostile creatures will start spawning and then life will become a little bit more difficult where did I just put that no I didn't okay good um, how long do we have before this spawns in factory three minutes okay I'm gonna cut here and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm ready to spawn the vehicle in once we spawn that in we'll I 
think, call in an episode. So I'll see you in a minute. Later. Welcome back. Okay, the hover vehicle is ready to bring in now. Um, what I'm going to try and do is spawn it on the roof here of the of the engine compartment. I should have enough space in this little area here for it. If you do find yourself in a survival base that's not compatible to, to spawning something on the roof, then what you could do is just um, make some concrete blocks and build yourself a little platform platform by the side of it. But I think you should be able to spawn it here perfectly fine. So yellow peril. Yep, fits nicely. And there we go. One hover vessel ready to go. Um, not the prettiest thing, but it serves its purpose. Let's put some power in it. Cool. And the devices in here. Yeah, I've got an ammo box, some car plenty of cargo space, mobile constructor, armor locker, and a fridge. So all mod cons. Nice and comfy. Um, one of the other things that sometimes happens when you spawn a vehicle in. Yep, yeah, see, some things will appear in the cargo boxes. Um, I just don't get it. Why? It doesn't seem to make any sense. I mean, I've even found in the ammo box, you know, heavy laser weapon ammunition. Doesn't make any sense. I mean, why? <laughs> However, you know, hopefully they'll fix that as well. So I'm going to gently lower this down to the ground. Mm, maybe not so gently. Bring it around here to where my survival constructor is. And then we'll be good to go. So I'm going to call it an episode here. In the next episode, what we'll do is add a harvest module to the front and a, and a harvest collection box onto this, gather up all the stuff from here and then we'll start exploring on our way over to TSQ or the trading station and hopefully we'll find some more um, well, some neutral POIs that we can loot. There was another village over here as well, wasn't there? We must go past that and loot that on the way as well. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll call it there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please press the like button. Please subscribe and activate your notifications so you can be informed when the next episode comes out. Thank you for your support on the channel and look forward to the next episode. Bye for now.